All right, friends, it's T and I'm back with another video and it's on Revival Fitness because they keep be being asked, can you do a video on Revival Fitness? I don't know what fucking video to do on this goofball, man. He's got so many stupid ass videos and they're long and it's just rambling about bullshit. But okay, Kino Body, Revival Fitness, whatever. I picked this one out of a hat because I can't go through, down through the list to find one to talk about. And so I already know what he's talking about. You're debunking dumb powerlifting myths, real proof. He's trying to tell you that a stronger is going to get you bigger right there. You can tell right now by looking at this stupid thumbnail that a stronger is going to get you bigger. I'm not arguing that. I'm not arguing that a stronger is going to get you bigger. Getting a stronger will, in, in myofibular growth, will damage the weaker muscle fibers and they'll get bigger, better, stronger, and faster. You understand me? But not on lifting a heavy weight and getting sarcoplasmic hypertrophy like a chronic fucking, a chronic uh, endurance lifter. So this guy is a little bit bullshit. Then he shows himself here. He's small. He's tiny. He's, and then he says he's aesthetic. He tries to compare aesthetic people. I just know he's going to do that. You see, comparing aesthetic people, bro. It's just, it's stupid because that's what they train for is aesthetics. You understand me? And even if they were to lift heavy, they'd still look aesthetic. Whatever. I don't know. Okay? Because they're chronically lifting, these people. They're endurance athletes. Let's review this video. Chest up. Shoulders back. Off the bat, he's ugly with all this hair on his chest. He looks weird. This is Revop. Actually bench that much? to look like you can bench that much. And just because you max out on your bench, even on a pretty regular basis, your muscles are not He can barely do 315, okay. He's a young guy and he can barely do 315. I can show you a little Asian kid in my community section doing 285, all right? And he did much better than this guy and the kid weighs like fucking 90 pounds. You're not going to start melting away and you're not going to sacrifice muscle gain just because you're doing so. And the kid wasn't even practiced. This guy's practiced. So before we dive into everything, let's just discuss the term power building itself, because this term really has no true meaning, right? It is an iteration of multiple fitness activities. It originally spawned as a combination of powerlifting and bodybuilding, even though the vast majority of people who use this term are not powerlifters nor bodybuilders. I will die on this hill, guys. I'm going to say this till I'm blue in the face, especially when it pisses some of you guys off because you deserve to be mad by it. You're not a bodybuilder just because you build muscle. If you have never and never planned to step on a stage until you do, you're not a bodybuilder. And likewise, even if you max out on the squat bench and deadlift routinely until you put on the singlet and go to a meet, you're not a power lifter. You can get mad and call that gatekeeping. There's no gatekeeping. These things are open entry. You pay the fee, you go to the competition of your choosing. There's no gatekeeping here. It's simply defining what- I mean, uh, you're not a bodybuilder if you don't compete in body bodybuilding. I mean, I've never competed in bodybuilding, but I'm a bodybuilder, but I ain't a fake one. You don't need to compete in these fake shows or whatever the fuck they're doing there. <laughs> to say you're a bodybuilder, you're a bodybuilder, meaning you're b building your body. And it's usually, it's usually for sports. It's not a sport. It's you build your body bigger, better, stronger, and faster because you want to use it in a real sport. That is the whole point. These things are because they are organized competitive events. You taking mirror selfies in your bathroom and going to the commercial gym or lifting in your garage. You don't qualify, buddy. I'm sorry. But this is where things get tricky because when it comes to bodybuilding. That, what? I, that, that made no sense whatsoever, man. I didn't know what this guy's talking about. Or the building part of power building. That is very vague because you can build muscle doing pretty much any exercises that you really want to. The power part. Yeah, of course you can. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscles, you could build them easy. How do you know what you're building? Here's a question. How do you know what you're building in the gym, whether it's myofibular growth or sarcoplasmic? See what I mean? How do you know that? What does this guy actually know? Why are you eating carbohydrates if protein, if protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to build muscle? Why is he eating carbohydrates? See what I mean? And I'm not saying he's not, he's not lifting. He's not lifting here. He's trying to lift heavy, not lifting heavy. He thinks that a heavy is going to get you bigger. I'm not, I'm not doubting that there's a gravitational loading on the cell, but it's kind of temporary. Again, there's a gravitational loading and then an unloading. 
These are all adaptation processes that your body goes through. All of a sudden you put a heavy weight on your back and you start squatting or you're deadlifting or whatever you're doing there. You move, you're trying to move heavier weight. What do you think is going to happen? Your body's going to compensate you. What exactly is it compensating you though with? For, for force production, let's say, let's say this muscle ended with MND size limit, okay? When you first came in the gym, you got the newbie gains. It reached the ceiling limit during, my, uh, by, uh, during um, hypertrophic process. It reached, uh, it reached the limit. The progenitor is not donating any more nuclei to support further muscle growth now. So what do you need to do? See what I mean? And so you keep coming in chronically lifting. What are you now if you're chronically lifting? You're an endurance athlete. These are all adaptations. How does it, how does it adapt to that? Well, endurance, it gives you glycogen. It starts loading glycogen. What is this glycogen? The carbs that you're eating. So I'm not saying that you're not going to get um, a forced production lifting these heavy weights, but what is that compensatory thing that your body is giving you through adaptations? It's myositic androgen receptors. That's what it's doing. They do not control the mass, but they definitely control the strength. And so you get more of these androgen receptors and then they widen, you get more of them and then the molecules bind to them. This is not rocket science, bro. This is all in science. You understand me? Yeah. Everybody likes to conflate so-called strength, right? You see these guys all the time say, I train for hypertrophy, not strength. There is this very, very weak... Again, hypertrophy is relative. I train for hypertrophy. Okay, so you are trained for a, an inflammatory response. You come into the gym and you try to inflame your muscles constantly to keep up with the Joneses, keep coming back and inflaming them to pretend you look big. He's a small guy, this guy. He looks, he looks average if, at, at best. And so he's coming thinking that I got to get a stronger to get a bigger, but that's not exactly how it works. In powerlifting, it's not I'm getting a stronger to get a bigger. They usually get what they call fiber splitting by lifting exorbitantly heavy weight. Now, some of them keep chronically lifting, so they fuck up the process. They've, it's mentioned this. I've mentioned this before. I've got stuff in my community section. They branch is what happens. And so they fuck up the process. It says they keep coming in frequently and so they fuck it up like a, a, like a chronic lifter, like a endurance athlete. That's why all these people, they're messed up. The power lifters are fucked up. They get some fiber splitting. I can't say exactly how much. Maybe some stay, some don't. A lot of it gets messed up like it says and they tell you in signs because they've they followed this. They've, they've followed this through. And then you get these bodybuilders. They come in too, chronically lifting. What do they get? Sarcoplasmic muscles. And these powerlifters get some sarcoplasmic because they're eating carbs too as well and they're lifting. So all these people are, are, have it so misconstrued they're not exactly sure at the, what the fuck they're getting in there. Weird assumption that talking about strength training automatically means powerlifting. Strength does not... No, I will agree with him. Strength training is not automatically about powerlifting. You could do, um, I don't know, calisthenics, uh, gymnastics... You know what I mean? These body body uh, exercises. Uh, I know people that do powerlifting and can't do them. Why can't they do them? Because you, it's an adaptation process. You need to get strong at doing that. It's your body has to adapt to doing that. That's why you're not able to do that. They're not able to lift heavy, and you're not able to do body weight exercises. It's really simple, unless you practice at doing them. Humans are terrible at doing anything on this planet. They walk on two feet. They they suck at running. They hate running. It's all stress. Human body, a human body hates stress, absolutely hates stress. But so you're stressing it to get something, to get it to do something by stressing it. That's the whole point. I mean that. I don't know where you guys came up with this idea. I don't know if it's because throughout the years, a lot of people that talk about strength do compete in powerlifting. Maybe that's why they get so attached to each other. But discussing strength and talking about getting stronger can refer to any exercise, any rep range. It is not exclusive to only the power lifts. The term power building really came to fruition, I want to say five or so years ago. I remember seeing it a lot whenever I was newer into the gym scene and consuming this type of content. But essentially what would be promoted is focusing on the bench and the squat and the deadlift, maybe the overhead press, maybe some other variations too. What it really boils down to, and if you have used or seen my- What does it boil down to? Buying his fake programs, that's why. And he's just average, he's average. So if you wanna look like him, average, yeah, you could, uh, well, like it looks nothing here. You could, you could um, use this stuff, whatever, this shitty programs. Programs 
I do a template that's relatively simple. You can argue, okay, is it as effective as XYZ other exercise? That's fine. But you're still going to grow muscle doing squats, deadlifts, bench presses, all the classic kind of stuff. Okay, so what kind of muscle are you going to grow doing these so-called squats and bench presses? Whatever the fuck he's talking about there. What type of muscle are you going to build? There's two types. Look, there's two types of muscle that you could build. So there are two types of muscular hypertrophy, myofibular, which is the increase in myofibrils, and sarcoplasmic, which is the increase in muscle glycogen storage. See that? So which one exactly is he building? Because he never says. He never says in his videos what type of muscle he's building. The artificial type, sarcoplasmic, or is it myofibular? See what I mean? going to grow muscle doing squats, deadlifts, bench presses, all the classic kind of stuff. And this he just says you're going to grow muscle doing all the classic lifts. What type of muscle are you going to grow, fucking man? Can this motherfucker tell you anything? Like what fucking, like man, do, do, does anybody want to know what fucking type of muscle they're growing out there? Or are they just going to go to the gym and lift repetitively in an endless fucking failure? you know believing that hey man i'm fucking building real muscle when meanwhile it's just a bunch of glycogen what a lot of people don't understand either man because again you guys are so enamored with the aesthetic culture everybody being lean all the time and being sure the reason why they're lean and aesthetic and everything because they know they've reached a myonuclear domain size limit they don't realize that their instincts are telling them that this is a newbie gain, it's a newbie gain limit, or a genetic, li I reached my genetic limit, or I'm a hard gainer. That's all they know in the back of their head because nothing's working at this point. They're eating a lot, they can't figure out, think about it. You're eating shit loads of food, even protein, whatever the hell you're eating there. These people that claim hard gainer. Why are you a hard gainer exactly? Why, why aren't you gaining if you're eating so much food? If protein synthesis needs to exceed this breakdown and you're doing that, why aren't you gaining any more muscle? See what I mean? Here's a question. You have to ask yourself that question. So, um, because you have something called a myonuclear domain size limit. See that? An MND size limit. And MND size has a ceiling limit during hypertrophic process beyond which extra myonuclei are donated by salicylic cell to support further muscle growth. And so no matter how much protein you eat or anything, you're not bypassing that unless you do something very specific. Hammered with the aesthetic culture, everybody being lean all the time and being shirtless. You think these dudes on the internet, all the aesthetic bras. And that's what people want to see. Actually, they really want to see that because they know in the back of their head it's unobtainable. And most people don't even want to be that big walking around. Some, yes, yeah, some, no. But good majority of people, they don't really care about that. They just want to look good because that's the society we live in. They know that looks are very important. And so... The aesthetic look is much is, is appealing, much more appealing, trust me. If you see a guy walking through the gym, you see these big guys walking, yeah, they're kind of big and puffy, whatever, walking through the gym. But when you see a motherfucker, man, with fucking nice aesthetics, muscular, walking by, believe me, bro, your eyes are going to gravitate towards him constantly. Why do you think Blaha's working on his body all the time now? Because he knows it's eye candy. It's aesthetics that that's what's gonna make his channel, but it's not working because he's an old dude. Nobody wants to watch an old dude, 75 year old dude in this garage pretending to create aesthetics. They wanna see young people. And this guy is ugly. That's why his channel, I even, I'm even surprised his channel's at 47K. <laughs> why the hell would you wanna watch some old dude? I don't even wanna watch this guy. I would rather watch Alex Newbank. That's why his numbers are so high. Now, as far as the people watching Greg Doucette at 2 million, they got to be really stupid to watch Greg because he's, he's even uglier <laughs> and he's an old dude. You think they actually are as big in person as they appear online. So say you come across two Instagram accounts. The first is a popular aesthetics bra and he's got the deep fried picture taken with a 4K camera all edited up. Yeah, that's smart. That's a smart thing to do. That's how you attract people to your channel. 
Look, man, you're just selling something. If you're selling something, what's the what, what is what what do you want to do? Market it. You got to market, bro. It's been ran through Lightroom and Photoshop. Another filter has been put on it. It's from the perfect angle. They took it a hundred times. He's got his abs. He looks very good. So you see. You, if you're asking my personal opinion, Alex Newbank looks really good. He looks. He's young and he looks damn good. Yeah. Him and you think, oh, that guy looks really big, man. He's got a lot of muscles because he's lean, right? Yeah, that's the whole point. It looks big on camera because it's social media, bro. You think they didn't know that? Yeah, that's why they're winning with social media. Now, if they were to come out in person or somewhere, maybe not personally, but they definitely would look good with their shirt off. <laughs> You'd be staring, even at the beach. And you see a power lifter that is smoking him on lifts of pretty much every category you could think of. But okay, so he's smoking him in the gym, uh, the aesthetic guy, he, this power lifter smoking him in the gym with all these numbers. But let me tell you something. That, that time in the gym that you spent is not often and it's very, it's like one hour, two hours at the max or something, whatever. And then you've got to go out in the real world, spend most of your time out in the real world and get girls and do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you understand me? You got to mingle with society and they treat you how they see you. Yeah, man. So looking ugly like this guy lifting is never going to make him lifting harder than the last time or lifting heavier is not going to make him prettier. Just because he's lifting heavier is not going to change the way he looks. He's always going to be ugly. The power lifter is recording themselves from 10 feet away so they can fit all of the bar and the plates into the video. They are without question going to be higher body fat in the vast majority of cases. And they're I'm telling you, no average person in the street cares about this shit. They don't give a shit. It's only people that are online, they care. And a very, very few select few care about this bullshit. They're not posturing for the camera. There's no perfect angles and all this other stuff. They just set their thing up and they go. Who do you think is going to look bigger upon first sight? But then think of what I just said. The power lifter is torching the aesthetic bra on all these exercises. So even Does he look like he's tor torching the aesthetic bra? This is him. Here's a picture of him. Let me see if I can get it up. There he is. Does he look like he's he's torturing these torching these people? He's small. He may as well try to get some aesthetics. He looks terrible. Do you think, who do you think looks better? Alex Eubank or this guy from Re Revival Fitness? <laughs> Come on, man. You don't have to be silly to believe that. Even if he does not appear bigger right off of the first glance, if you put these two together, the power lifter not only- I don't know if he's natural or whatever the fuck he's doing. He may be taking creatine and stuff, a bunch of phony, bunch of phony pills and this and that, doing a bunch of phony stuff. But he's not big for a power lifter, believe me, he's not. Would he be thicker? He'd be wider. There's obviously going to be some height. You know, he should speak for himself. He keeps talking about all these other people. Speak for yourself. See, in my channel, I always spoke for myself. I showed myself. I showed what I was doing and stuff before my channel got taken down. Um, I did a bunch of things. So I really, my whole goal was about me and showing what I could do. Could, can you do that? I don't know. He can't do that. He's just lifting a heavy weight here and that's about it. Anybody can lift heavy weights. Just practice and you'll lift heavy weights. But it's meaningless. His body is not, it's not really, there's not really anything going on there. He's just fooling you. His nice little attire here is a fitness. He's a fitness slave and a lifting slave and a gym slave and he's a fitness slave because look he's got the whole attire and everything fuck i dress so down man when i go to the gym you know i just don't want to pay attention to being pretty and lifting because i got to go look pretty and everything in the gym when i go in there i'm like a savage you understand me i'm just going to tear tear shit up differences depending on who you're talking about but the fact that you guys believe the power lifters are somehow lacking and all this muscle mass because they do power building or they don't only train for hypertrophy, it shows how little you actually know. I go to gyms with serious power lifters in them and they are not small. I go to gyms with serious power lifters, yes. He, he keeps uh, revering all these other people, but look at him. Look at him. He's got all these programs and everything. If you follow his programs, you're gonna look like him. You understand me? Like a like a little like a little monkey <laughs> with those with those like this fur patch, whatever. 
You're gonna be like him, small. All people, the men or the women. You're gonna be small and weak like him. These guys have gigantic turkey legs. They have big hamstrings. They have big backs, big forearms. Their chests, once again, are not going to be as defined typically because of the higher body fat. I haven't seen that. Are they mesomorphs? Maybe that's just their body type. I don't know that for sure. Maybe they're taking steroids. You keep revering these people. Steroid people? Who are you talking about? Because it ain't you, bro. You keep claiming you're natty, but I don't know. But anybody who's benching well over 300 pounds does not have a small chest. It simply does not work that way. And this might be the best. I don't know. I've seen some people that can bench 300. They got a small chest. I've seen an Asian kid bench, uh, I don't know, what was it, 385. He's got a small chest, and so what? And he's not even practiced. Part because the hypertrophy cells are like, oh, well, he might be really strong, but I still look better. <laughs> I'll tell you what, bro. If these power lifters cut down, and when they do, and there are numerous examples of this, both men and women, who start out as power lifters, or maybe they do power lifting in their off season, then they do bodybuilding as they get leaner, they kind of rotate back and forth between them. These power lifters, man, once they finally cut down, I don't care if you're talking natural. Bodybuilders do all the big force. What are you talking about? In a lot of the cases, you could even say the vast majority of cases. He looks small. I know that the last guy he just showed there, it's, uh, I forget his name. The power lifter, he's small. He's got shit genetics too. I don't know. They have more overall muscle mass than the guys obsessed with only hypertrophy. A common phrase in bodybuilding is that shows are won from the back. If you had to guess, as a general rule, who has more developed posterior chains? All of it. Lats, traps, low back, glutes, hamstrings. Is it going to be the- I don't know. Ask yourself this question. If I eat bowls and bowls of, of, of complex carbohydrates, potatoes, and I go to work out in the gym, but I'm an ectomorph and I have very low body fat, and I start putting on this sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and I get fucking super massive. My back and everything starts popping and everything, everything starts popping and everything. It, what does that say? What does that say exactly? What do you think about that? The aesthetic hypertrophy guys who say, oh, well, squats are not optimal and deadlifts are just not a good hypertrophy exercise. Bent over rows and too much low back involvement, not stable enough. Or are the people who squat and deadlift in some... Look at him, man. <laughs> this guy's funny. He competed, I think... Capacity. He competed, if he competed in a bodybuilding show. I don't know, one or something. Look, not doing got, other heavy... Look at the food he's got there. He's got cereal, shit, it's all garbage. Cereal, and he's got some fucking pasteurized milk, processed. Back and leg movements on a weekly basis. But I don't compete in bodybuilding, so I don't care about what you just said. Okay, point taken, that's fine. But what if I told you that people who compete in bodybuilding, many of whom have IFBB pro cards, some of them on the Olympia level in the top five in their classes, what if I told you that they still do power lifts? And not only that, that they do them for low reps because whether you compete in bodybuilding or not and a lot of you guys still claim you're bodybuilders even though you don't the ultimate goal of the recreational lifter who optimizes hypertrophy or the body man if you want to look like this if you want to look like that just do what he does he looks puffy here i could tell it's sarcoplasmic right now that's uh, a sarcoplasmic man builder both want the most amount of muscle possible. So you would think, oh, well, there's no way that these bodybuilders would be doing the power lifts because they're not optimal for hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. Check the screen right now. I'm going to overlay a handful of people. I'm actually going to include some women too because I know that's going to really piss some of you guys off. You can see their accounts. You can check their pages if you don't believe me. They all do the power lifts, if not outright maxing out in some capacity. And once again, I'm sure people are going to misconstrue what I'm saying. I, I love these lifters, man. They just like chronic, <laughs> chronic slaves. Man, lifting slaves, bro. <laughs> lifting this stuff off the floor. It's amazing. I think it's on purpose at this point because this is pretty clear, I think. They're going to say, oh, Revival says you should be maxing out and doing the power lifts. You have to do them to get really big. I never said that, guys. All I'm saying is... So many people now say that doing these lifts is detrimental to hypertrophy and you're going to lose gains and suffer and all this stuff. It's going to be oh, too fatiguing. You can't do your other volume properly. That's not the case. These are just a Holy shit, did you see few that? examples. I could did you see that black guy there? 
He could barely lift. I was stressing to lift it up once. It's crazy. Find many many more this video could go on for hours and hours of just these examples that is evidently not uh, i just love these slaves man it's crazy you know there are other ways taking other avenues to build muscle and strength at the same time you could build muscle and you could build strength at the same time it's called myofibular growth so as you as you get um as you get bigger you get stronger as you get stronger you get bigger at the same time through myofibular growth and that's not based on chronic lifting. It's based on periodic lifting. If you're a chronic lifter, like I said, you are an endurance athlete. You're an endurance lifter, therefore you're putting on the second, the second part of hypertrophy, you're putting on this stuff. You're putting on glycogen storage, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. It takes on a, sh a life of its own. It's a known fact in lifting, man. You can check it for yourself. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. I gotta find it. So you see these people, they, they're, they're resistance trained, high volume resistance trained. They're trained young men, they're not untrained, they're trained. People that are trained, they get what? It's attributed to what? Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, it's a known fact. What is it? It's glycogen concentrations, like it says down there, okay? Men, and what does it tell you here? It tells you it's glycogen storage. And if you type up in here in, in Google, sarcoplasmic, mm -hmm. it's a type of artificial muscle growth. It's a type, it's a kind of artificial muscle growth. Yeah. You're increasing the density of the, you're not increasing the density of the muscle fibers, just the fluid. It's, uh, there's no strength involved there when you, when you, mm -hmm. when you look up uh, sarcoplasmic. Oops, that was an accident. Refers to the fluid, increase uh, volume of the fluid. Muscles appear larger, but does not increase the strength. See? Just increase the fluid in there. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Yeah, man, you need to know what the fuck you're getting in the gym. But I love these fake, these fake bodybuilders like him. Not the case. If that was the case, all these people who were doing the power lifts and maxing out. Again, these are IFBB pros, high-ranking, Olympia caliber. A lot of them. They would not be where they were if what you guys claim is actually true, that the power lifts and strength training and all this other stuff are so detrimental to building size. And now, of course, the response is going to be this. Oh, well, everybody you just showed is on a bunch of steroids, bro. That doesn't count. We're they themselves do not build size. Food builds size, and these um stem cells they build size these satellite these myonuclei they more myonuclei and the food and they build size <laughs> without those ingredients without those ingredients you can't build size but you can build size through glycogen storage get it sarcoplasmic size that the fake one that is the easiest that's why people they do the easiest stuff they're not full see they're more focused on lifting a heavy weight because they think well if i lift heavy i'm gonna get big by gravitational loading and unloading on the cell. And then you got these people, you know, I don't know, they just keep, you know, coming in like, again, more chronic lifting, more lifting. They just keep thinking they're building real muscles. They're going in there and then they're eating their herbivore diet. They're not eating, they're not eating their natural diet, which is a carnivore diet. Cause doesn't protein build muscle? Why are you eating fucking carbs? <laughs> it's just stuff like this, man. It's such baloney. We're talking about natural lifters. Natural lifters, <laughs> they need... Once again, you can't even prove all these people that claim natural are natural. There's no way to do it. You guys just believe everybody at face value. We used to know this a number of years ago, before the hypertrophy cells overtook every aspect of lifting content. We used to know this. If you want to get big as a natural, you also need to get strong. The only people this really isn't... If you need, if you want to get big as a natural, you need to get strong. No, you don't. You, I just showed you. You can get sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And you can get big without getting strong. Look. You can get big... You can get big without getting strong. During workout, more fluid moves into the muscles to provide energy. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy refers to the increase of volume of fluid. It makes the muscles appear larger, but does not increase the strength. So you don't need to get, you do not need to get strong to get big. You understand me?
You don't need to get strong to get big. <laughs> yeah, man. Strong. The only people this really is an exception for are the people that are juicing. And as I just showed you, plenty of people who are juicing, even on heavy amounts, they still are very strong. The only scenario you're going to find somebody with these big bulging muscles and they're so jacked, but then they're not nearly as strong on main exercises as you would think they are. Yeah, we used to have a term for that. It's called a juice head. That is only achievable through not just a little bit, that is a lot of... Um, steroids don't build muscle, they're enhanced performing drugs. And if you're, again, if you're a chronic lifter and you're coming in, that, that getting stronger lifting something heavy is because the molecules binding with it. I told, I've explained this a million times, it gets so tiring, man. The lady who picked up the 6,000 pound car off her kid because the kid was dying, she got an influx of this adrenaline rush. Boom, is she strong? No, it's temporary. And so again, what he's talking about, it's, just, it's bullshit, man. Of anabolic use and in some cases too yeah yeah the anabolic use my steroids are just going to draw more of this glycogen into the muscle then you're going to just get more bigger those people might actually be pinning like oil i think it's called pmma injections if not outright synthol into their muscles to make them look yeah that's artificial too more artificial muscles look man <laughs> it's really simple once they go off the steroids why does it all go away so fast look at mark Plummer. it's all gone much bigger but that is the only conceivable scenario. These guys used to be universally laughed at by all serious gym goers. And now they're celebrated. Like, that's how much the tide has turned. And of course, said guys, fanboys and associates, they're going to defend him and they're going to give him the self-assurance. Like, oh, you're not that weak, bro. It's okay. Well, he's just built different. He's just... Yeah, he's There's a lot of power lifters with underwhelming physiques, not that much muscle mass. And they lift a ton of weight. Yeah, that's right. Here is how you can nuke this argument in seconds. It completely makes it go belly up. Every time you see a comment like this, here's how to respond. Name five. As I mentioned earlier, I don't want to hear- It's easy to respond. Show your body. Oh, it's small. Then it doesn't work. Okay. For this Reddit conjecture, I want actual names and or accounts. I want to see these mythical people that have barely any muscle mass, terrible physiques, but they're so insanely strong. Here's how it's going to go. They'll say, uh, the skinny Asian guy that benches 400. That happened like eight years ago at this point. Uh, uh, that's all they got. Sure, you can look it up and you might be able to find a few more examples. I will agree with that too. He's tiny. It's androgen receptor strength. But even so, if you can name five, congratulations. You named five lifters. Even and it usually lifts only for one rep or two, maybe at the max. If you could compile a list of dozens of power lifters who are much stronger than they look, and that's also still relative ultimately because of the factors we talked about earlier. Powerlifting's fake. I've seen bodybuilders that can that can rep that shit out. And powerlifters, they can only do one or two, maybe three reps at the max they do sometimes. But I see powerlifters repping that shit. I mean, bodybuilders, they rep it out, bro. They are repping that shit out. That is still a fraction, a tiny fraction of the overall populace of those lifters. And the fact- So who's stronger exactly? The powerlifter that can only do one or two reps or the bodybuilder that can rep it out? See what I mean? Cause again, it's endurance. I'm telling you, this is, this is, man. Steroids are enhanced performing drugs. Uh, drugs, they enhance your performance. And therefore, this is endurance. Chronically lifting is endurance. And so these, these bodybuilders, yeah, man, they're chronically lifting. So they're endurance athletes now, but they're still lifting. They're still doing certain things, but it's, they're repping it out because man, they got sarcoplasmic muscles, bro. It's just fucking bullshit. The loan that we say, this guy is way stronger than he looks and it's a big deal. That proves the point because we innately know that the bigger people are in almost every single case always going to lift more weight and even so I, yeah i would it depends on yeah if they're bigger per sin bigger by stature meaning they would have more muscle fibers than a smaller person definitely they can outlift them if they're practiced again man this just doesn't this guy i don't know it's all over the place let's talk about what this strength is first of all so we have an idea that's not that one
Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Shit, disappeared. There we are. So myositic androgen receptor controls the strength but not the mass of the limb muscles. So we know what this strength is. So we have an idea. Yeah, man. Okay. That the bigger people are in almost every single case always going to lift more weight. And even so, if these small people with the underwhelming physiques built more muscle, guess what? For their own genetics and potential, they would still get stronger. And when it comes to the, this guy's really jacked, but he's not as strong as he looks, a lot of these guys online are not as big as you. Yeah, if he gets jacked, but he's not that strong, because again, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, like I showed you there. Think. A lot of. It doesn't make you stronger. The hypertrophy guys at this point are editing their pictures, not just with filters and Lightroom and that type of thing. They're genuinely photoshopping their pictures to give themselves bigger muscles. Okay, they're pulling out the edges so their arms and shoulders pop out more. They draw their waist in. Some people make this too obvious. Others are pretty darn good at it. A common ex Yeah, it's social media, man. I don't know. Lifter. Can you believe that? But he was doing a little photo shoot for some product. That's I watched nice. him is ever good. And since a lot of you are still probably not convinced, or at least you're still on the fence, like, you know, bro, like, you're making good points, but, you know, hypertrophy... Let's go back to the gold feared the most, even 50 plus years later. You can look at videos and photos that uh, you are still probably not convinced, or at least. Let's go to the golden era, yeah. You're still on the fence, like, you know, bro. Like, uh, fake bodybuilders. You're making good points, but, you know, hypertrophy. Let's go back to the golden era. Because even to this day, to this day, these are widely regarded as the most aesthetic. Yes, let's go back to the cosmetic look, the fake cosmetic look, people. Ha, <laughs> this is such baloney, this channel. And the most sought after physiques for men. You see these type of comparisons on Instagram all the time. All these people are phony, man. Taking drugs, bro. Getting a cosmetic look. Come on. I'm Arnold versus Seabum. And even though Seabum is the current reigning Mr. Classic, he's got all those followers, almost every single comment is going to be in favor of Arnold. And pretty much everybody would say that Frank Zane's physique is better than all of the top classic guys today. You know, which is funny because a lot of these natural zealots, they'll put them in their thumbnails to get attention and clicks, even though they say all the steroid users okay. are inherently bad people and a bad influence. Except when they're getting you more clicks and eyeballs, I suppose. Not hypocritical at all. But even a physique like Steve Reeves, if we want to keep this in the so-called natty attainable range, his physique is still widely desired today. So many guys would be thrilled to get to this point. Now let's put on our thinking cap. No, no, no. That's his body type, man. He just looks that way. He's an ectomorph and he has a nice body. That's all. He's a slim guy. And he has nice, um, whatever. He just looks good. That's all. Compared to the average person. Despite all of their differences in height and weight and era, where they're from, their rep ranges, whatever it might be, what did these guys all have in common? They used the basic barbell exercises. Yes, many of them did all three power lifts, sometimes routinely. That was a huge portion of their training. This is what really cracks me up, man, because the guys that are still revered the most, even 50 plus years later, you can look at videos, at photos, at their training logs, at their books, all this other stuff. These guys talk about the basics constantly. They didn't have access to all these new machines and methods that we- Yes, yes, the basics, man. Yes, yes, all these steroid people. We have today. They wow. still had better physiques. Now, yes, touch, man. it's kind of ridiculous. And even if you- They had better fake physiques taking cosmetics. Okay, man. You still want to hang your hat on the natty argument? Like, oh, we're concurrently- No, I don't want to hang my hat on the natty argument. This was painful to watch. Anyways, this was just garbage. I'll see you in the next one. Tell what you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. Revival Fitness. Uh, he's a, a fitness slave. See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.